There is something to be said for following authors on their social media and seeing what life they lead outside of their written work. And it's really cool to see what their passions are and what some of their favorite things are that they share on social media. And it's really fun to see how that reflects into their writing. Welcome back to another video. Today I am doing my review of Murder at the Flamingo by Rachel McMillan. Rachel McMillan was first introduced to me through her Herringford and Watts mystery series. I saw it in a ChristianBooks.com magazine and the title of The Bachelor Girl's Guide to Murder really hooked me in. There is just something about that title that got me very interested in what that book was about. In The Murder at the Flamingo, we follow Hamish DeLuca as he leaves his home city of Toronto and goes to Boston to visit his cousin, Luca. We also follow Regina Van Buren, or Reggie Van Buren, who is an heiress to the Van Buren fortune of New Haven. She gives up her privileged life and takes off to Boston as well to forge a life of independence for herself. Both Regina and Hamish get caught up in the glitz and glam of Luca's new nightclub opening, The Flamingo. During all of this, both Hamish and Reggie both feel that Luca is hiding something from them and there is something more sinister afoot. This was a highly entertaining read. I listened to the audiobook via Scribed. The audiobook was very well done. I enjoyed the narrators for that. As well, I enjoyed that the narrator did the accents of like the time period and also Regina's transatlantic accent. I really love that accent. It's so fun to listen to. It gives you that old Hollywood glitz and glam feel. So she did that very well as a narrator and it kind of set that scene for you. Rachel again wrote very engaging and very fun characters. I loved Regina and just her spunk and her enjoyment for life and just her fight to be an independent woman during all of this and to give up a life of privilege and just find her own way in life. I really enjoyed that spunkiness about her. I also really liked Hamish. You only get to meet him as a baby in the Herringford and Watts series, but then you kind of get a glimpse into what it was like for him to grow up and you also find out that he has anxiety. I don't very often read characters who deal with mental illness like anxiety or depression, so it was really interesting to have a character who deals with anxiety and panic attacks. I found that Rachel wrote a very believable character and especially addressing it in that time period and what mental health would have been seen as or addressed in that way in that time period. This is kind of set that pre-World War II 1930s, so it's kind of set in that time period, so it's interesting to look at what mental health would have been seen as at that time period. Nowadays, there's a lot more discussion and a lot more talk about it and a lot more ways of helping people deal with those. There's also accepting that people are dealing with this and then instead of telling them to, you're fine, it's all in your head. Along with our two main characters, you also get a glimpse of some really amazing side characters. Everybody had their place in the story, everybody had their contribution to the story, and everybody was well written. There was a great connection of everybody, and everybody was just a really well written cast of side characters. I don't know how to describe it, but it was just really pivotal to the story of how these characters came to be. Along with our new cast of characters, there is also nods and mentions of our Herringford and Watts characters. Of course, there's mention of Jem and Ray, who are Hamish's parents, and Ray even makes an appearance via phone or just an argument that Hamish has with him, so you get to see Ray a little bit. There's also some unfamiliar names being dropped that have very familiar last names. So there's some more connection to our lovely Herringford and Watts crew that I would love to find out how this all happened and it left me just wanting to know how the Herringford and Watts story continued into the Van Buren and DeLuca stories. Following Rachel McMillan on her social media, I can tell she has a huge passion for history. I feel very drawn into her passion for history. I can definitely tell this author puts a lot of research and work into her writing. What I also really enjoy is when she loves something like her city, Toronto, you can tell in her writing. Her characters have the same passion and love that she has for her home city. Also for Boston, the way she describes Boston makes me feel like I'm walking down the street myself and I've never been to Boston, but I feel like I would like to someday after reading this. 
I also know that from her social media, she's a huge baseball fan, so to incorporate that love of baseball into her character, Hamish, it was just really fun to see characters kind of take on their author's passions and likes, and that's what I really enjoy about an author, is putting their own passion and their own personal stamp on their work. The writing was so time period set that I really felt like I was in that time period. The slang, the language, the way people talked, the way people carried themselves was just a lot of fun and it really felt like you were being drawn into this nightclub time period in the 1930s. Overall, I gave this a four star rating. The writing was just incredibly done. The time period in history really felt like you were living it. The characters were relatable and also just fun to read and just you fell in love with characters as they go along. So it was really great to have this all encompassing story that ticked off all the boxes for you. As for content, there is a murder involved. Somebody is going to die. So there is a little bit of violence in there. There's also a lot of drinking, it is a nightclub scene, smoking, a lot of mention of cigarette smoke, that was a very chic thing to do at the time, so there's a lot of mention of that in here. But other than that, even sexual content, there was maybe the description of how a woman looked in her dress, but even that wasn't like fully lingered on or overly described, so there wasn't really anything for sexual content. As I said, for violence, there's going to be a murder. It is in the title. That is not a spoiler. But there's also mention of, like, the Chicago gangster scene, so, like, Al Capone and all of that. So there is some, like, gangster violence in there as well, but nothing that overly horrified me at all. In fact, it just really incorporated it into the story so well that it made you feel like you were living in that time period. So it was really well incorporated without being brutal and unnecessary. So for content, I give it a clean stamp of approval. I do guarantee this a clean read, aside from the things I've mentioned. Also, this is adult historical fiction, but I would find that young adult would really enjoy this as well, and I feel like it is appropriate for young adult. Hamish is about 20, 21, so he's still quite young, so I feel like this would be quite appropriate for adult as well as young adult. As always, with any book that I talk about on my channel, if you guys have any questions about anything in the book, let me know in the comments below and I will answer that for you with, of course, not spoiling the book for you. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!